Things went from bad to worse when, at the end of the 1932-33 season, the club narrowly missed having to apply for re-election, prompting manager Fred Stewart to resign after 22 years of service. Stewart proved to be the most successful of all the Cardiff City managers. Club founder Bartley Wilson took over the temporary position of manager before handing over to Welsh FA councillor Ben Watts-Jones during the worst season in the club's history, finishing in 22nd position in 1933-34 and needing to be re-elected to the 3rd Division South. The city's poor form continued throughout the immediate post-war decade, the highest position in those 10 years being 9th in the 3rd Division South. With full-time football beginning again in 1946 after careful team building throughout the war years, Cardiff shook off their poor pre-war performances and immediately gained promotion to the second division. Billy McCandless took over from Cyril Spears, who had been with the club throughout the war years, although the change was only temporary, with Spears returning from Norwich in 1947. In the minds of many older supporters, the 46-47 Bluebirds team was the best ever. And with a team recruited mainly from local talent, the statistics are impressive. Between September 1946 and March 1947, City had an unbeaten run of 21 games, of which 19 were victories. Centre forward Stan Richards made a club record by scoring 30 league goals in 34 matches. Cardiff went up as champions and heralded the start of some of the Bluebirds' most successful years. After narrowly missing promotion on three occasions, Cardiff finally brought First Division football back to Ninian Park in the 1951-52 season, after an absence of 23 years. Promotion, however, was not assured until the final game of the season against Leeds United. The game, played on the same day as the FA Cup final, was watched by over 52,000 rain-drenched supporters and proved to be one of the great days in the club's history. We had one game left against Leeds United here, uh, the first Saturday in May and that week in Cardiff you couldn't go out unless somebody was talking to you all the time about this game the tension built throughout the week and I remember here when the game started there were 52,000 people here tremendous excitement and we won the match fairly comfortably really I remember the Leeds one or two of the Leeds players were saying go on we're not going to kick you today because We'd like you to win and get promotion. Um, so when Wilf Grant scored after about 28 minutes, I think, it settled us. And from that moment on, he got another, then Chisholm got a goal. And the fact they scored, I think, two minutes from the end didn't make any difference. When the final whistle went, we'd won 3-1. The crowd spilled onto the pitch. You couldn't see a blade of grass from the director's box where, of course, we were all gathered to acknowledge the, the plaudits of the crowd. It was a great day. It was one of the greatest days, I'm sure, in Cardiff's history. Uh, because we hadn't been in the first division since the 20s. In the last game of the season, which I'll never forget at all, uh, when we played Leeds and we won the match 3-1, and I was very fortunate to uh, score two goals in that game. I don't think I'll ever forget that clip, ever. For reasons that have never been made public, manager Cyril Spears tended his resignation at the end of the 53-54 season. 1954 also proved to be a sad year with the loss of club founder Bartley Wilson, who retired at the age of 85, and the death of former manager Fred Stewart. With new secretary manager Trevor Morris filling the vacancy made by Spears, Cardiff began to flounder, narrowly missing relegation, by beating Wolves in the final match of the 1954-55 season. After two seasons of fighting off relegation, the Bluebirds finally succumbed, finishing the 1956-57 season in 21st position. Of their last 14 matches, they had won only one. Centre forward Trevor Ford played his last match for City in November 1956. The Welsh international had cost the club a record fee of £30,000 three years previously. Controversy surrounding his autobiography, I Lead the Attack, soon followed, resulting in a three-year ban. The next season saw another leading figure leave Ninian Park in the shape of Jerry Hitchens, who joined Aston Villa for £22,500. In July 1958, Trevor Morris left to join Swansea, and he was replaced by coach Bill Jones. With Cardiff struggling near the foot of the second division, Jones made one of Cardiff's finest signings by bringing Derek Tapscott from Arsenal for £10,000. 
had five good, good years at Arsenal, scoring quite a few goals for them um, until I got injured. Then um, Cardiff City came in for me, and the manager, Bill Jones, who saw me from Barrytown to the Arsenal, who I knew was a good manager, brought me back to Cardiff. And that was September 58. City's bid for promotion in the 1959-60 season attracted average crowds of 25,000 to Ninian Park, and with the team on their way to attaining 90 goals in a season, it was easy to see why. Big of a Cardiff, through to Watkins. Watkins across to his opposite number, Walsh, and he's got Sullivan coming up to take this pass. And he puts it through to Tapscott. Tapscott, a lovely black flip. And here's Sullivan coming up hard. And it turned very nearly for a corner. A great shot on the run there by Sullivan. As Fisher, harassed by Moore, comes out. A good kick, that. Walsh challenged by Clark. Puts it back to Milne. Quickly, they say. And up comes Milne to Tapscott. And he very nearly gets it past Garvey, the centre half. But play on, says the referee. And here's Sullivan now. Over the halfway line. And Joe Bonson for Cardiff. Chasing it, challenged by Brian Garvey, the centre half. Puts it across, and a good shot, and a better save. Fifteen minutes gone. And a nice one there, and, a, and this time it's a second goal. Scored by Bonson. Bonson's header after a free kick. Beautifully placed there by Watkins. Fifteen and a half minutes gone. And Cardiff City 2, Hull City 0. Milne comes up, still still limping, but still with a kick as we may see now. Yes, a nice one. Hello, hello! He's hit the post. Alec Milne, the injured man, hits the bar there. On April the 16th, 1960, City celebrated their 50th anniversary as a professional club. Their opponents, by coincidence, were Aston Villa. Unlike their first meeting 50 years previously, this time both teams were championship contenders. It was one of the greatest games I think I played in for Cardiff City for a long, long time, where everybody knew that a win against Villa, even though we had three or four games left, we had to win that one. Um, my old manager of Villa at the time was a friend of mine who... Joe Mercer, who broke his leg my first game at the Arsenal. So there was joy for both because Villa were top and Cardiff City was second. The winner come from Graham Moore. I think it was at the Grangestown end. Um, he hit a cracker. And that was the... We were there for promotion, even though we had three games left. After the match, there was a few drinks before we went up to the crowd um, in the dressing room. We went up to the, to the stand after and the crowd was unbelievable. You couldn't see a blade of grass at Ninian Park because of the crowd on the pitch, waiting for us to come up onto the stand. After spending about 45 minutes down there, um, we had a few bottles, and then we all went into town and celebrated. And I can't even watch how I got home. It was a tremendous night and a tremendous achievement for Gareth City. Every game after, from Christmas on has been a... a real cup tie. Once we everybody started to talk about this promotion business, it started to build up and it's built up all along. And then we struck this bad patch for a couple of games and then you don't want me to say what happened after. I think it's been a very, very hard season. Very hard indeed.